using Dagger with Jenkins. Dagger is a tool that allows people to develop, test, and run their pipelines locally. The cool thing is we can take those Dagger pipelines and then just execute them from within Jenkins. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of simple examples about how you can get started using Dagger. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has both Docker and Dagger installed. Down in the description is a link to a sample repository that we're going to be using in this video. Now, as I just mentioned, I have both Dagger and Docker installed on my agent. If we go ahead and take a look at the Dagger documentation about how to get started, and specifically I'm looking at Linux. If you're running on Mac OS or Windows, there's other examples there. So all I had to do was install the Dagger binary, and I also installed Docker because Dagger has a dependency on BuildKit. And the easiest way to get that right now is just by installing Docker. Let's go ahead and take a look at our sample repository. What you can see here is I have a main branch, but it really doesn't have anything in it. And that's sort of on purpose because there are actually three branches. I have a 00 start here, a 01 hello world, and a 02 basic Docker example. I chose to put these examples within separate branches within the same repository so we can quickly and easily create a multi-branch pipeline to look at each of these examples. If we go over to our controller, you can see that I already have the job set up and because it scanned, it already ran once. But we will go ahead and run each of these jobs again so you can see what happens as the job runs. Before we do that for 00 start here, let's go ahead and go back over and take a look at what that branch looks like. First off, let's go ahead and take a look at our Jenkins file. This Jenkins file really doesn't have anything to do with Dagger. I'm just making sure that I can access both Dagger and Docker on my agent. This is a pretty straightforward example and one you should always do to make sure that you have the tools that you're expecting to have before actually writing your real Jenkins files. So let's go back over to our controller. Let's click into start here. And then let's click on build now. If we take a look at the output for start here, what we're going to see is Dagger version is at 0.2.5. And the Docker version that we have is 20.10.14. So let's go ahead and go take a look at our hello world. If we go back over to the repository, I'm going to go back up to the root. Let's switch over to hello world. The first thing I want you to take a look at is the git ignore. Since most of my development is on a Mac, I went ahead and included a .ds store. And I'm also excluding q.mod. Q.mod is necessary when Dagger is running, but that's not something that I want to check into my repository. I want that to be freshly built each time I run my job. Let's go ahead and flip back over to the root and let's take a look at our Jenkins file. Remember I was just talking about Q.mod? When Dagger do is run, which is our primary command for running our Dagger pipelines, it's expecting Q.mod to exist. So what we have to do is first do a dagger project init, and then I'm doing a dagger project update. Do it in that order. And then once all of that has run, the q.mod has been created. And from there, I'm able to do my dagger do hello. Now you also notice that I'm specifying a log format plane. Since I'm running inside of Jenkins, I just want to have a plain log. So no JSON, no anything else. I just wanted as plain text as possible. And the hello is the action within our Dagger pipeline. Let's go take a look at this example. So if we come back into the root, we're going to see a file named main.q. Dagger uses q for the pipeline language. So if we take a look at main.q, we can see that we have a package that we have to specify. And that can just be a name. It doesn't have to be like Java where things match and you walk up the tree. It's a package name. I'm importing two Dagger IO items. I'm importing Dagger and Dagger Core. And the one thing that I want to call out right now is this video isn't about getting into the depths of Dagger. These are just simple examples of how to integrate Dagger with Jenkins. If you want to learn more about Dagger, 
go take a look at the documentation over at docs.dagger.io. And then everything around Dagger is based around a plan. And what I'm doing here is I'm pulling in an Alpine image, Alpine 3, and then the task name, which is the hello that we specified in the command line, is using inside of that container once it spins up. That's the reason why we needed to have build kit available. It's spinning up that image and using it. Within that, we're going to say echo hello world. So we're just passing in parameters, arguments, to this container. So let's go ahead and go back over to our Jenkins file for 01 hello world. Now again, before we run it, let's take a look at our Jenkins file. We need to initialize our project, dagger project init. We need to run an update, and then we're doing dagger do hello, and then we're specifying what log format that we want to see. In our case, it's plain. Let's go back over to the controller. Let's click on build now. And taking a look at the output of two, we see our run for dagger project init, dagger project update, and then our dagger do hello. And then from the output, we see hello world. Now finally, what I want to do is take a look at our last example. Let's go back over to our repository, go back up to the root. Let's look at 02 basic docker. The git ignore is the same as the other branch. Let's take a look at our Jenkins file. Taking a look at the name of the branch, you're probably thinking, okay, we're gonna create a container image and probably push it up. And you wouldn't be wrong. In fact, you would be more than right. Let's take a look at how this Jenkins file has changed. Think back to the one that we just ran with Hello World. We had our init and update. And right now I'm calling a different action because I have a different dagger file created. I'm saying dagger do push. And again, I'm passing in the log format of main. We'll take a look at push in just a moment. But notice up here, I have my environment variable, dh underscore creds, and it's pulling in a credential with the ID of dh dash creds. I've already gone into Docker Hub, set up credentials, and added those credentials into my controller. If you haven't watched the video about how to create an image and push it to Docker Hub, the link for that is down in the description and it walks you through step-by-step step how to create the credentials and set them up and use them within your pipeline. So for this example, compared to the Hello World, the only thing that we've done different is we've added an environment variable that's using the credentials helper to load in our credentials from the Jenkins credentials store and put it into an environment variable named dh underscore creds. And then the other difference is instead of calling do hello, we're calling do push. Let's go take a look at our main.q. We're using the same imports, except we've changed out one of our imports. We're now pulling in an import from universe.dagger.io slash docker. This import gives us access to this docker object, which is going to give us the ability to build and to push our images. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait, Darren, I didn't see a Docker file in this branch. And you would be correct. There is no Docker file. I am dynamically building out how I want my image to be created by saying this. Within Docker build, I'm saying Docker pull, and I'm pulling in this source image, which is just a basic Alpine image. And that's the only thing that's going to be in my image. Think of this as from Alpine colon 315.3. If I specified a Docker file, that's what it would look like. But here, I'm able to define it within my Dagger plan. And then let's take a look at the push. So simple, create an image, no big deal. But let's look at the push. The image that we're gonna be using is build output. Well, this build is coming from this build action. So the output of the build action is what we're going to use as the input for our image for pushing. And then the destination is just this hard-coded tag. Again, simple examples right now. We're not getting into the depths of Dagger. But note this auth section. I have a username and I have a secret. And notice how this is referenced. 
I have client.env.dh underscore creds underscore USR. And for secret, I have client.env.dh creds underscore PSW. Since my credentials are a username password type credential within Jenkins, by using the credential helper that we saw in our Jenkins file, where we said dhcreds equals credentials, dhcreds, then not only do we get an environment variable for dhcreds, but we also get two extra environment variables, one for our user and one for our password. But where does client.env come from? Well, if we take a look right up here in lines 9 through 14, we see this client definition. What client means, and specifically client env, is it is passing those variables from the host system up into the Dagger plan. So dhcreds underscore usr is a string, and dhcreds underscore psw is a Dagger secret. So let's take a look at this as a whole one more time. My Jenkins file, I have an environment variable, dhcreds, that's using the credentials helper to load in dhcreds from the Jenkins store. We'll take a look at that before we run it. And then we're saying dagger do push. But notice here that I'm just calling push. I'm not calling build and push. If you're used to using Maven or NPM or Gradle or any of those other types of tools, it works in the same basic way. I'm specifying the end of the chain for myself. And then it's working its way back, figuring out all the things that have to be done in order for this to be resolved. So in my case, looking back at my main.q, what we see is I have push, but push has a reference on build. So that means I can't do push until build is complete. So let's go back over to our controller. And as I promised, I'll show you the credential that we have for Docker Hub. If I go to Manage Credentials, we, you can already see that I have a DH creds here. And these are my credentials for Docker Hub. I'll go ahead and go over to Docker Hub. If we go ahead and refresh here, note that we do not have a Jenkins example dagger repository here. When we take a look at our example, we're going to be tagging it Jenkins example dagger with a tag of 100. So let's go ahead and go back over. Let's run this last example. Basic Docker, build now. And when we take a look at the output, we have our dagger project init, update. It's building, building, and it's completed. But let's go back over to Docker Hub. Let's refresh this. And now we have Jenkins example dagger a few seconds ago. And we can see that it has the tag of 100. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.